The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... good to argue with the inevitable. Actually, the best rebuttal you can present to a frosty north wind is a fur-lined overcoat. But isn't that the way we go through life? Arguing with the inevitable, the imponderable, the incomprehensible, and the unchangeable. Who are you, Ralph? Who am I? Well, I fell in love with you. I thought you were what I wanted, an average guy, but that's not what I wanted at all. But I am an average guy, Sylvia. No. Oh, you're dangerous. Exciting. And I don't care if you go with other women. Why, a man like you, Ralph, no one woman could be enough. Sylvia. Well, I don't care about the others as long as I'm the one you come home to. mystery drama, You're Better Off Guilty, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Christopher Tabori. It is sponsored in part by ARM, Allergy Relief Medicine. I'll be back shortly with Act One. gone days, storytellers would celebrate the death of kings. Today, kings being generally in short supply and basically out of favor, we have a brand new breed of hero, or more accurately, non-hero. You see them on the screens. You read about them in books. They're just ordinary, everyday, average fellows. They dream no great visions. They set no impossible goals. They neither challenge fortune, nor do they defy fate. Well, what can you do? It's the age we live in. And these are the materials we have to work with. Who got the report? Can we get in the car? Oh, for crying out loud, Bernie, shut the door! How can a guy concentrate? I don't know what's the matter with those guys. <laughs> You'd think we never had a murder around here. Inspector Thorstedt. Oh, come on now, will you? Give me a break. She's not even cold. How do I know who killed her? Sure thing. Absolutely. The exact split second we get even a glimmer, I'll get right on the horn so you can carry out your sacred obligation to keep the public informed. Oh, what a pack of ghouls. Uh, hey, Paul, uh, send that guy in. You know, what's his name? Whoever he is. Uh, and don't put through any more calls from reporters, huh? Pardon me, is this the, um... Uh... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on in. Shut the door. Let's see now. Uh, your name is Northfield. No, it's, um... Oh, yeah, Southfield. No, it's... It's Westfield. Oh, yeah. I, I figured it was in there someplace. And you're the one who found the body. Yes, sir, I did. Well, I want you to tell me the exact circumstances. But I already did that. Yeah. Yes, I told him to the officer who, who came to the scene, then to a lieutenant, I believe, behind a desk, and then to a detective. Yeah, well, uh, it don't count until you tell it to me. Yes, but Captain... Uh, Inspector. I'm only trying to say that each of them wrote down everything I said, so... Yeah. Every one of those guys knows how to write. That's never been the issue. Okay. Now, according to what you said... Uh, got it here someplace. Uh, Inspector, is this going to take Long? Long? I don't know. As long as it takes. You see, the thing is, I was due at my office at 8 o'clock. Yeah. It's half past 10 now, and... It's a local call? Yes. Pick up the phone and dial 9 first. Thank you. Oh, Inspector, what am I going to say? Say you'll be late. Hello, Miss Reimer. 
Uh, this is Ralph Westfield. Where am I? Well, uh, you'll have to tell Mr. Stratton that I'm, um, I'm, I'm at police headquarters. There's been a murder, and, and I'm being asked... No, 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 wait a minute, Miss Reimer. Miss, Miss Reimer! Inspector, how am I going to explain this? Explain what? Oh, what I'm doing here. Oh, uh, Mr. Stratton. No, no, no. I, am I, am I, am I what? No, please, please, wait a minute, sir. Inspector, am I being held? Uh, you're being questioned. Mr. Stratton, I'm being questioned. Oh, no, sir. I didn't do anything. I just happened to find the body. Uh, yeah. Just a minute, sir. I I'll, I'll, I'll ask. Inspector, when will I be free to go? I don't know. Then I'm being held? You're being questioned. <laughs> Are they, um... They're just asking me some questions, Mr. Stratton. Oh, I don't, I don't know anything about it. What? Well, if I don't know anything about it, why are they asking me questions? Well, it's, it's because I found the body. Oh, no, 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 sir. I, I wasn't looking for it. In Hewlett Park. At seven this morning, was a, a woman. Very young woman. One of those one of those singing stars. Jill Joris. Okay, come on, let's go. Oh, uh, I, I have to hang up now, Mr. Stratton. I, I'll explain everything as soon as I see you. Yeah, yes, sir. Oh, I can just imagine what he's thinking. You don't know how conservative he is. So there you were in Hewlett Park. Now, what were you doing there at 7 o'clock in the morning? It's the way I walked to my office. Didn't you say that you had to be there at 8 o'clock? Well, that's how long it takes to walk. You mean you walk an hour every morning? Yes, sir. I have a very sedentary job. I need the exercise. Uh, how long have you been walking like that? Oh, it's a month now. What is that statement you made? Oh, yeah. You saw this car over by the side of the road. Yes, sir. It was a Girardi 462. Now, I'd never seen one, actually. Yeah. So I asked myself, what is it doing here in the park? So I walked over. And then I... Then I saw her. She was lying over the wheel. You know what I mean? Her face was turned toward me, and her eyes... Her eyes were just staring at me. And did you know who she was? Well, she looked like the famous star, Jill Joris. But I said, no, it can't be. Mm -hmm. Why? People like her, I mean... What would she be doing up at 7 a.m.? And then what did you do? I said to her, are you okay? Or, or, or something like that. And she didn't answer. So I, um... You know, I instinctively, without meaning anything, I put my hand on her, on on her b body, to, to rouse her gently. And she just fell across the seat. And then I saw the blood. And that's how it got on my sleeve. Mm -hmm. and then what'd you do? I ran down the road. I saw this police car and... Well, that's it. And did you see anyone else in the park? Oh, no, sir. Now, you didn't see or hear anything that could help us? No, sir. And that's your story? Yes, sir. Why'd you kill her? What? What, what did you say? Why did you kill her? Oh, but I didn't kill her. How, how can you ask that? It's a good question. No, you have no right. I... You were the one who discovered the body, you say. But I didn't kill her. I didn't even know her. Okay, that's your story. Are, are you accusing me? I'm just saying that's your story. But it's true. I'm not saying it isn't true. Well, what are you saying? I'm saying be available in case we have to talk to you again. Come in. Miss Reimer, Mr. Stratton said for me to come in. Oh, yes, he's waiting for you. Mr. Westfield is here. Yes, Mr. Stratton. You're to go in. Is he upset? Well, what do you think? Uh, come in, Westfield. Come in, come in. Close the door. Yes, sir. Now, what sort of business have we here? It's been on the radio, television. 
And I suppose by tomorrow it'll be plastered all over the newspapers. I'm sorry, Mr. Stratton. What sort of image is this for a company like ours? Oh, I didn't mean to create any problems. Uh, what were you doing in the park at that hour, anyhow? Just walking. Walking? Now, Westfield, I want this thing to end right here. Do you understand? Yes, sir. The sooner it's blown over and forgotten, the better for you. Yes, sir. I'm giving you the benefit of the doubt. Sir? I'm assuming, of course, that you're innocent. Oh, but I am. Because if it should come out that you... No, 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 Mr. Stratton, believe me, I'm innocent. Well, at best you were indiscreet. Why couldn't you take a bus to work as normal people do? I hope we've heard the end of it. Yes, sir. That's all for now. Thank you, sir. How'd it go? Oh, Miss Reimer. Is it possible that he believes I killed her? Oh, man, Stratton? Huh. Who knows what he believes? I still don't know what hit me. There I was, just walking along. Sure. And now? Now what? I don't know. Hmm. You know, I never noticed you before. I'm not a very noticeable person, I guess. I know we had a Ralph Westfield buried deep down there in research, but I never suspect you. I, I came up here sometimes to deliver something personally to Mr. Stratton. Yeah, that's what I mean. Are you really not a bad-looking guy, either? Oh, thank you, Miss Reimer. Yeah, why don't you call me Belle? Sylvia! I don't know if I should see you, Ralph. What are you talking about, Sylvia? Let me in. Ralph, what are we going to do? Everybody's talking about it. It's all you hear at the office. When my mother called me long distance, what's this about your fiancé? Ralph, why did you do it? Do what? Whatever it was. Well, all I did was I discovered the body. All right. Why did you do that? But, but because, because you see a body with blood? Please. Well, no, no, what, what I'm trying to say is I did what a citizen is supposed to do. Sure. I had an obligation, a duty. Ralph. I had to do it. The law says that if you don't... I know all about that law. But there's another law, Ralph, the law of common sense and, and experience. Now, now, Sylvia, Sylvia, please listen to me. I was just walking to work. That's another stupid idea. And I saw this great-looking sports car, this Girati 462, and I saw someone slumped over the wheel. So? Somebody could have been asleep. Why didn't you just mind your own business? No, Sylvia, this person wasn't asleep. I could tell. How could you tell? There's a kind of sprawl, you know, to a dead body. I, 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 I just knew she was dead. Oh the more reason for you to keep walking. I thought of that. Then why didn't you do it? Because that could have been worse. How could anything... Suppose, after somebody else found the body, suppose the cops started asking, asking around if anyone had been in the vicinity. Suppose someone had seen me, described me. It almost could have happened. I had a narrow escape. What are you saying? After I had a good look at her, I ran down the road. I hadn't got more than a hundred yards when I saw a police car. He was headed in her direction. So? He would have found her. Yes. And he would have remembered a man running down the road. If I hadn't stopped him, he would have taken a good look at me. It was seven in the morning in the park. Oh, if only you could have taken a bus to work like normal people, Ralph. He would have seen her dead in the car. He might have turned around and come after me. Then, then where would I be? I don't know, Ralph. Oh, Sylvia... It's been a very rough day for me. I'm... I'm sorry, Ralph. The cops have been at me. And then at the office, old man Stratton had me on the carpet. And everybody's asking questions and making snide remarks. I'm sorry, Ralph. You're the only person, and this is the only place in the world where I can expect to find some peace and, and some quiet. Yes, Ralph. This thing... This crazy episode, I, I, I just want to forget it. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Please, Sylvia. All right. Do you want to go out to dinner? No. I might run into someone I know. Well, then I can prepare something here. All right. Besides, we should be talking about the arrangements. The arrangements? We set the date, didn't we? Oh, Oh, yeah, well, certainly, yeah. Now, you have to decide if you want to go back and be married in your hometown church 
or whether to invite the minister to come here. It doesn't make any difference to me. Did you make up your mind? Well, Sylvia, what do you want to do about it? Sylvia? Ralph, I want you to tell me. I have to know. Did you kill her? Suspicion. Who in this world can be above suspicion? Not even Caesar's wife. Are we suspect because of what is in ourselves or because of what just happens to be in the eye of the beholder? We're in for a considerable amount of suspicioning when I return with Act Two. Fellow Americans, if you're still shopping here and there and everywhere for shoes, hold it right where you are. Put your feet together, stop running around. Just step around the kinney and you'll cover the ground. Anywhere you want to go, head your feet in our direction. Kinney's got it all. the idée fixe, the fixed idea, the obsession. And it can be anything, a thought, an impression, a theory, even a prejudice. But once it takes root in the fertile soil of the imagination, it can never really be pulled out. Mr. Ralph Westfield is up against a problem of this nature. What did you just ask me? You heard me well. Did you kill her? How could you ask me a question like that? Why would I kill her? Well, because maybe she was getting tired of you. What are you talking about? I never even knew her. The one and only time I ever saw her, she was dead. Is that true, Ralph? What do you mean, is it true? When would I ever have a chance to see her? All day? I'm at work? In the evening? I'm generally with you. At night, she's working. So when would I see her? Six o'clock in the morning in the park. I told you, I never saw the girl in my life. <laughs> Inspector, you've got to give us something for the evening news. I don't have a thing. We're checking out Miss Joris's past. Well, how about this fellow Ralph West? Yes. Is he a suspect? At this time, we have no definite evidence. Well, that's not the same as saying yes or no. I don't want to mislead anybody. Well, what's the department doing? At this time, the department is following a certain line of investigation. Now, if you'll all excuse me... What was she doing out in the park alone at that hour? That question will be answered in due time. <laughs> You were Miss Joris's companion, Miss Evans. Uh, yes, Inspector. I was her manager. Now, let's see. I know I've asked you a lot of questions. Yes, Inspector. But I have to place her out there around 6 o'clock in the morning in the park. Now, how can you help me? Well, she'd been very restless lately. Trouble sleeping. Sometimes she'd come to my room and talk to me. This would be 4 or 5 in the morning. Sometimes she wouldn't. Sometimes she'd go out. Where? I don't know. I'd hear her return about seven or so in the morning. And I'd say, where have you been? And she'd say, out, driving around. And she wouldn't tell you where? No. You said she was restless. Would you know why? Well, it could be a sign that her love life was in trouble. Can you tell me about that? I don't know very much about that myself. Miss Evans, I'm working on a homicide here. Well, it's the truth, Inspector. Dozens of men were in love with her, but... She had problems. Yeah, what kind? Oh, finding someone who could be serious about her. Whom she could relate to. That's why she never went out with men in show business. It would all be too public. So, who did she go out with? Men she would meet here and there. I think underneath all that high-powered glamour, she was a very domestic little girl. She liked men who were 
Average, every day. Middle class, white collar types. Teachers, accountants. Accountants? Something like that. She must have been very deeply involved with one. Because I had to talk to her about something very important. She just never had the time to sit down with me. What was so important? Her investments. Yeah? With this inflation, she should be doing something with her money. But she would keep saying no to me. Don't worry about it. It'll be taken care of very soon. Do you know what she meant by that? No. No, Inspector. Well, thank you very much, Miss Evans. Hello, stranger. Oh, it's you, Miss Reimer. Belle. I was just getting these figures ready for Mr. Stratton. Oh, I just thought I'd drop by and see how you're doing. Not so good. Not so good? Well, I would think you'd be sitting on top of the world. I beg your pardon? Every day your name is in the paper, your picture. So, incidentally, uh, <clears throat> Ralph, get a haircut. Better, a styling. Oh, but you don't understand. My fiancé is very, very upset. Oh, I didn't know you had a fiancé. I think she wants to break it off. Why? Because... She just can't help supposing I had something to do with Jill Joris. And you think that's why she's mad? Well, sure. <laughs> you don't know women. Actually, she's excited. What? The whole idea. It, it, it stimulates her. I don't understand. Naturally. See, here's Jill Joris, the sex symbol, the sex goddess. And whom did Jill Joris want out of all the men in the entire world? Or Ralph Westfield. Ho hold on now. Do you I... see how much more desirable you become to your fiancé? Actually, to just about any woman with <coughs> imagination. Huh. I never stopped to think of it that way. Well, you really do have a lot to learn. Yeah, but, but you I... have a position to live up to now. What do you mean? You're a public figure. But I really didn't do anything. Why do you keep insisting? Do you think I'm lying? Well, I don't even think that's important. It doesn't matter what you did or didn't do. Well, it certainly does. What matters is that you are a celebrity. You're going to be photographed frequently, and you're, you're bound to be on TV. Mm -hmm. Oh, you ought to dress better. Well, why should I have to dress? You have a very square look. Now, that's not at all in keeping with the public concept of what the lover killer of Jill Jorah. I am not the lover killer. Well, at least you're the lover. Well, now, will you stop accusing the me of... The public now knows that Jill Joris would go riding in the park along about sunrise, yes? And that you go walking in the park at the same time? But I'm only on my way to work. Oh, we have a considerable body of opinion out there that insists you were her lover. But it isn't true. It fits. It fits what? You and Jill would meet early in the morning for your little tete -a -tete. On this particular day, some jealous lover got there before you did. And None of what you're saying makes sense. Hey, you want to be the killer, too? <laughs> Fine with me. I'm neither killer nor lover. That's your son. And I won't let people believe it. What do you say, lover? Buy me a drink. And we'll work on your image. Ralph. Hey, baby. You're late. It's only midnight. And you've been drinking. Where were you? Taking care of some business. Ralph, you look different. That haircut. Yeah. That jacket and shirt. You like it? His outfit sent me back 200 bucks. $200? What you got to eat in the house? You keep me waiting for, for five hours, and then you barge in here and say what's to eat? Is that what I'm supposed to do, wait around and cook? Honey, you got a complaint? Forget it. Goodbye. I don't come around here to be asked. Well, please, hey, I... come here a minute. Well... You don't have to say anything. Mmm. <gasps> mmm. Oh. oh, Ralph. Oh, please, Ralph. Don't leave me. Never leave me. Hey, do you mind if I come in? Oh, why should I mind? So, this is your new address. Yeah, I had to move. Yeah. 
I've been thinking about it for a long time. And I decided I needed a bigger, uh, a more comfortable place. Besides, you're a celebrity now. Fix your drink? No. Oh, I forgot. You must be on duty. No, it's just that I don't drink. Well, what can I do for you, Inspector? <sighs> you can save us a lot of time. You can sign a confession. A confession? You want me to confess to the, um... To the murder of Jill Joris. Inspector, you have no proof. You're singing a different tune now, aren't you? When I first accused you, you insisted you were innocent. Now you say that I have no proof. Well, that's the same thing. No, not really. It describes two different kinds of situations. But we're getting there. Slowly and surely. Uh, g g getting uh, where? You work for a brokerage house, don't you? It's an investment banking firm. Mm -hmm. You know about stocks and bonds. Well, I, I'm, I'm in... I, I, I do research. Jill Joris needed some investment advice, according to her manager. Well, what has that got to do with me? Well, you would know how to advise her. All we're doing now is narrowing the gap. Well, uh, what, what, what gap? A guy comes running to the cops and says, Hey, I just found a lady who's been murdered, right? Yes. Well, on the face of it, there's nothing between them. Nothing in common. They're from two different worlds, okay? That's the gap. Get it? Yes. Hmm. We find they both would be in the park at the same time every day early in the morning. That could be a coincidence. Well, sure. Then we find she needed investment advice, and he was in the investment business. Oh, but that still doesn't mean that... Little I... by little, the gap gets narrower. The more we dig, the more we'll find. And we're digging. Now, you want to make it easier on yourself, on everybody. But I'm innocent. I would know if I killed somebody. Uh, we get this every day. Guys like you... You want to forget it. You're trying to believe it never happened, so you insist you're innocent. But the evidence is out there. We're going to find it. Save us a lot of trouble. Confess, Ralph. is innocent. Why are we so sure? Or is everybody so sure? All we have is Ralph's word. And can we depend on it? Well, we can depend on finding out in Act 3. At the store, they told me there's a powerful anti-itch drug I can buy without a doctor's prescription. Now, I use Bicosine Cream as directed. No more burning, embarrassing itching. No more scratching. Bicosine actually speeds healing. Bicosine Cream. What a relief. For constipation, remember X-Lax Pills, the overnight wonder. X-Lax Pills, the overnight wonder. X-Lax Pills, for occasional use only as directed. Secret guilt is by silence betrayed, says Mr. Goethe. For guilt is the worm that burrows deeper and deeper into the darkness. One of the very few things in this world that becomes stronger as it grows older. Provided one is guilty in the first place. Inspector, if you think I murdered Jill Joris, why don't you arrest me? I don't have the proof. Yet. But I know you did it. What makes you so sure? Look, I've been in this business a long time. What does that mean? I know how things add up. It could also mean you've been adding them up all wrong. All the evidence points to you. Then what's holding you back? Because it doesn't constitute the kind of evidence you can use in a court of law. Then it doesn't constitute any kind of evidence. Don't leave town. Why does Stratton want to see me? He never sends for me. I think he's afraid you're going to quit. Quit? Mm -hmm. Why don't you uh, go inside? Ah, 
Yes, Westfield. Come in. Come in. Come in. Uh, there's something uh, I would like to discuss with you, Westfield. Yes, sir. I think you'd better close the door. Oh, yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> Westfield, when I first learned of your involvement in this case, I was shocked. You realize that? Oh, I do, sir. We are a most conservative investment house. And the idea that one of our young men could be involved with a, a rock and roll female singer. She was more than just a rock and roll singer, Mr. Stratton. Oh, I'm sure. I was, uh, to put it frankly, dismayed. Uh, the notoriety. And yet, amazingly, there has been a um, positive plus for Stratton and Company. Were you aware of that? No, sir, I wasn't. Uh, the idea that a Stratton broker could be a lover of a singing star like... Uh... Well, no, but I'm not exactly a broker. I'm, I'm only a research aide. Well, I'm aware of that, and we'll come to that shortly. Uh, everywhere... At lunch, at board meetings, people ask me about this Jill Joris. Uh, I understand she was uh, quite a um, voluptuous woman. Yes, sir. That's what they say. Oh, you're a sly dog, Westfield. I don't blame you for keeping it to yourself. Yes, sir. Miss uh, uh, Reimer, now outside, happened to mention, uh, in a rather cryptic way, uh, that you were thinking about leaving us. Oh, Mr. Stratton, I, I, I would never... Oh, consider... no, no, no need to leave. Uh, you could be as effective a broker with us as anywhere else. Are you offering me a promotion, Mr. Stratton? I'll match any reasonable offer. Uh, well, uh, man to man, uh, just between us now. Uh, how was this, um, this Jill Joris? She was marvelous. Oh, I would have bet on it. May I quote you? I'd rather you didn't. If I do, it'll be off the record. Oh, yes, sir. See you in the morning. Thank you, Mr. Stratton. So, you were promoted. Thanks. Well, I deserve a better thanks than that. How about tonight? It's so good to see you. Sit down. Where have you been all week? I've got a promotion, you know. Been busy, Sylvia. Oh, well, my mother called long distance. She wants to know if we've set the date yet. That all has to be up in the air for a while till things fall into the groove. Oh, yeah, well, I understand. It's a new job, uh, lots of responsibility. Yeah, I realize that. Oh, hey, turn on the TV. I think we'll see me. Now, back to the news talking about Ralph Westfield. I asked, who is Ralph Westfield? I had no answer at the time. I have no answer now. Ralph Westfield is a mystery man in every sense of the word. Originally, he gave the impression of being an obscure clerk in a brokerage house. But it turns out, he's an important executive. He frequents the top night spots, always with some beautiful young lady. Wow. Very often, he is seen in larynges with the cool, blonde, beautiful lady who is his new companion. Turn that off. Frequents... Oh, you don't want to pay any attention to that. Uh, she works in the office. <gasps> who are you, Ralph? She's just Mr. Stratton's executive secretary. It, it was a business dinner. Answer me, Ralph. Who are you? Who am I? I met you. I fell in love with you. I thought you were just an average guy because, well, that's the kind I wanted. But maybe that's not what I wanted at all. I don't understand. Maybe that's not what you are. You're dangerous, exciting. Maybe that's what I want. I don't care if you go out with other women. Ooh, but I don't. But a man like you, no one woman could ever be enough. I don't care. As long as I'm the one you always come home to. <laughs> Jill Joris? I mean, I, I don't know if you killed her or not. Sylvia. And I, I don't want to know. All I know is, I just want you, Ralph. I want you, whoever you are. <laughs> Hello? Is uh, Ralph Westfield there? This is Inspector Thorstead. Oh, uh, Ralph, it's a police inspector. Oh, my old buddy, Thorstad. Inspector. Oh, Ralph, busy? Well, yes. I thought we'd have a little chat 
About what? Oh, the usual thing. Tonight? How about tomorrow morning? It's a waste of your time. I got all the time in the world. It's a waste of the taxpayer's money. If you're just going to go over the same old ground and spend... Oh, we're breaking some new ground. Uh, for instance, Ralph, the gun. What gun? The gun you killed her with. You had to hide it. And you had to hide it in the park. You had to get rid of it quickly. So you had to bury it nearby. Inspector, I... We'll find it. We'll turn over every rock, every stone, every blade of grass. What do you say, Ralph? You want to make it easier on all of us? Come in tomorrow morning. But I... How about nine o'clock? Oh, make it ten. Yeah, come in. Inspector? Oh, yeah, you're, um, what's her name? Uh, uh, Miss Evans. <laughs> yes, Miss Evans. Uh, Jill Joris's agent. A manager. Yeah, same thing. No, not really. Well, Miss Evans, what can I do for you? Well, you must be very busy. I am. I got a murder here. That's what I've come to see you about, Inspector. About... The murder. Oh? Is there anything you can add to your statement? Uh, I see. I've got it around here someplace. I've been thinking it over, and there is something I neglected to tell you. Oh? What's that? I'm, uh... I'm 35. Do I look it? Well, you... You do and you don't. You know the biblical allotment of three score years and ten. I, I still have half my life to live. And these days, with medical science, it could be a lot longer. Wouldn't you say that? Well, you asked me just before if I was busy. Well, the point is, Inspector, I'm going to have to live with this thing for a long, long time. I, I don't know if I can. Well, I, I do know. I can't. So if you have my statement in front of you, please add this to it. Uh, uh, are you ready? Shoot. Sure. Funny you should say that. That's exactly what I did do. I shot her. You what? I shot Jill Doris. Oh. oh, I feel better. You shot Jill Doris? I was stealing her money. I took some to cover some bad investments. I was going to put it back, but she found out. She was very angry. She was hurt. She was furious. I said, let's go for a drive and talk. Talk about it calmly. She was going to fire me. I had nothing. No one in the world. I couldn't think. I shot her. Maybe I meant to all along. I I had the gun, didn't I? Uh, here it is. You can match the bullet. When I read in the papers that you had a suspect who went walking in the park mornings, I... I let him carry the brunt of your suspicions. That's it, Inspector. I killed her. The door was open, so I came in. Uh, will you dictate that to a stenographer, Miss Evans? <laughs> hey, hey, Paul. Hey, get Bernie in here. I killed her. Inspector. I, I killed her. Now, now, you just take it easy, Miss Evans. Inspector. What do you want? You sent for me. We had a date. Oh, yeah. Well, we don't need you anymore. Mm -hmm. Is Stratton in? Mr. Stratton is in conference. Well, look, Belle... Uh, Miss Reimer. I have an appointment to talk about my promotion today. Oh, Mr. Stratton asked me to cancel it. Oh. Well, uh, when does he want to reschedule it? Probably never. Oh. Well, now, look... Consider I... yourself lucky you still have a job. Oh? But, but but why? Please tell me why, Belle. Miss Reimer. Sylvia, I, I, I've been ringing and ringing. I know. Aren't you going to ask me to come in? I don't know. Aren't you glad I'm out of it? Aren't you happy I wasn't having an affair with Jill Joris? That I didn't kill her? Aren't you glad? I, uh... Well, yes, I suppose I am, in a way. Oh, please, mm. Sylvia. It was crazy. I admit, I, I enjoyed it. And you enjoyed it, too. 
for a couple of days. I was somebody important. Mm, notorious. Sylvia, you said you wanted me. You, 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 you said you wanted me no matter who I was. Do you remember? Well, I'm just plain Ralph Nobody. Sylvia? Oh, Sylvia, please, Sylvia. All right, Ralph. You're my somebody. But from now on, you better behave yourself. Behave myself? Yeah, and don't ever do anything like that again. Anything like what? I don't know. But whatever it was, just don't do it again. sums everything up, doesn't it? I suppose it's the old, old story. Once accused, never excused. The lingering doubt. So many people say, if he wasn't guilty, why did the police arrest him? In this world, there are certain surefire, no-win situations. Make sure you never get caught in one. I'll be back shortly. Well, it's one thing to punish guilt, but quite another to punish innocence. We have just told you the story of an innocent man. After all, what crime did Ralph Westfield commit? He just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. And let that be a lesson to you, dear friends. Our cast included Christopher Tabori, Marion Haley, Joan Shea, and Ray Owens. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.